Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be discussing arrays. Now what if you have to create let's say a variable for each color where well, you're not going to just want to go string red equals the string red string orange equals you know the string orange that just be tedious and not to mention you'll be taking up a lot of memory and a lot of space uh, to reserve you know all those different strings that's just too much Yeah, let's not do that so instead we could just create an array now, bear in mind that arrays can only hold that one data type, however you declare it. So bear that in mind. So in this example, we'll be using strings. So they must all be strings. So what's the format for creating an array? Basically, you just type out the data type that you want it to have, or that you want all the elements to have inside of it. Then the name of array, then some brackets right after that. So that's really the only difference between a typical variable and an array then a semicolon. Now that's typically not enough. There's two different ways we can go about initializing our arrays because we have to initialize them as well. Uh, so we can't just do it this way. So, But there's two different ways to do this, so I'm going to show you both. One way is if you actually know the elements that are going to be going in there. If they're given, uh, so you're not going to give the user the opportunity to fill that array with the values they want to give it. So let's just say that you, the programmer, knows exactly what goes in there. So we'll call it string colors. Then we can set it equal to some curly braces. Then inside these curly braces goes each of the values we want, separated by commas. Since we're dealing with strings, we're just going to type in quote. And you separate each one with a comma, as you can see. So is that six? One, two, three, four, five, six. OK. And let's see what we want. We want red, orange. Whoops. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yellow green, blue, and purple. Okay, so now we have a st um, an array of strings, and we have all these different values in there, so we can now access all of them. So how do we go about accessing them? Well, let's figure that out. So I'll put out C out, and I'll type out like color, something like that. Then in order to access them, type out the name of the array, colors, followed by your brackets, and then whatever element you want to access. Now, each of these elements inside of our array are assigned an index number, starting at zero. So red is zero, orange will be one, yellow is two, so on. So if you want to remember how to remember what the highest index number is in your array, is to um, take the number of elements, we have six, and subtract one. So purple will be number five. Let's try accessing number zero first. There we go. So I click save and let's run this. Colors red. So that worked. Now let's try number five. I'll click save and now let's run this. And that says purple. So that all works. That's really, really cool. Uh, but typically this isn't usually how you'll do this. I'll actually comment this so you can still see it. Uh, typically when you create an array, uh, you're going to have to uh, declare the array uh, and allow the user to be able to fill it in with the values that they want. So let's figure out how you go about doing that. And that's really the more complicated part of this tutorial. This was easy. So let's create an, uh, string colors again. And, well, we don't know the value, so that's it. But this time, we have to actually put in a number here. We didn't have to put in a number here because uh, since we're setting it equal to all these elements, it knew how many, well, spaces to reserve in this array. It knew that there were going to be six elements. So typically we could just type in six like that, uh, and that's a constant. Uh, but we will never hard code numbers in there like that. That's not good programming practice. On top of that, you can't just create a variable like this and, you know, plug it in like that x. And as you can see, it says expression must have a constant value. So that's why if you hard code a number, it works. But yeah, it needs to be a constant. And that's how we'll typically do this. So constants are global. That's how we will be using them. And we'll call it, whoops, const int capacity. And we can set that equal to whatever the highest number of elements we want. Uh, and that could be just anything. That doesn't mean we're going to use all of them. You don't have to, f when, you, uh, when you put in your number, like we put six right, right here, and we you know, obviously wouldn't have filled this out, we wouldn't have to use all six, just so you know. So what's the max that we would want to allow them to put in? Let's say 30. 
So now we can put capacity in here. There we go. So now we have uh, an array of strings and we can hold up to 30 elements in there. So now we're going to have to figure out how to actually fill it up. So we're going to have to be using a loop. So uh, we're going to be using a while loop specifically. So there's two different things we're going to have to create first. And I'll explain them. That's int i is equal to 0. That's our incrementer. Then, um, well, whatever we type in, the string. So string, and let's call it input. Something like that. Then we'll have to actually have a message pop out. We'll have it say something like, please type in the colors you want. And we'll have it say negative one to stop or something like that. So this message will be prompted and then they'll be able to type in with spaces in between all the different colors they want. So they can type, in all, type it in all at once without this message continuously popping up. So now we're going to need a while loop. So I'll throw out while. And then there's two things we need to have. First of all, we need to make sure that, uh, oh, first of all, we need to actually get input from the user. So they'll be typing in a series of strings. And while input is not equal, now since we're dealing with strings, make sure you don't put negative one here. Uh, make sure you put in the string negative one because we're dealing with strings. So now that's one thing we need to make sure. Then there's another thing we have to make sure as well. And that's while i is less than capacity because you don't want them to exceed capacity. Now remember, uh, you might be thinking, well, while i is less than the capacity, but don't you want it to be less than or equal to capacity so they can reach it? No, because remember, since uh, index numbers always start at zero, the highest subscript will always be one less. So don't do less than or equal to capacity, only less, strictly less. Uh, you know what, I should probably change it to five just so you can uh, see how it will stop later because uh, I want you to see how it works. So then, uh, so if all this works, so we'll have this message that pops up, and if input works, what we're going to do is set uh, colors at i equal to, and where we typed out in input. Then uh, we'll have to increment i up by 1, and then we'll have the c in again, so c in input. So if I click save, uh, ch -ch -ch. let's print, hmm, what should we print? Let's print colors at zero only. Is that all right? I think that's all right. Oh, and line. And let's have it say uh, first color. Don't worry, well, I'll show you how to print them all. Uh, don't worry about that. I just don't want to do that yet because I want to show you this function. Okay, so now we were prompted with this um, print in how many colors you want. So let's type in... What should we be typing in? Let's type in green, blue, uh, violet, and should that be it? Oops, I typed in enter. Oh, I have to type in negative one. There we go. Sorry about that. It says negative one to stop. I didn't follow my own rules. And the first color was green, as you can see. So it went through our loop for you. But here, I can't really prove to you that it filled up the array accordingly because, well, we're not printing the entire array. We're only printing the first element. So how can we print the array? Well, first of all, well, we're going to have to create another loop, shall we? So I'll cut this out. And this time, uh, since the only reason why I used a while loop up here is because we're checking this while something is uh, not true. This is why I use the while loop. But this time I'm going to want to use a for loop. And you'll, all, you'll typically always use a for loop for printing. So, uh, so we'll have int j is equal to 0 while j is less than... Uh-oh. Seems like we have a problem here. If I typed in capacity, do you think that would work if I typed in capacity like this? Do you think this is foolproof right here? No, because we m might not necessarily have filled up the entire capacity. 
So how can we go about finding out, um, you know, what if we only put in three like we did before? We only want, you know, three to pop up. We want it to be, you know, while j is less than three, not capacity. So how can we, you know, f solve this problem? Well, what we can do is actually create another variable. I could just actually, to be realistic, I could just put in while i is less than i. Would it be less than i or is it, or would it be i less than i minus one? I'm not sure, but I'm not going to do it that way because that's typically not how you'll do it. Uh, the first thing that you'll do actually is create a whole nother variable, and this would be called int num of elements and this variable we're probably going to see for the rest of the series anytime we're dealing with arrays you're always going to have a variable called int num of elements and I don't want you to get you um, this confused with capacity uh, so I'll set that equal to zero to start uh, capacity will always be equal to the max elements that you can have in your array but num of elements will always uh, be equal to how many elements inside that array you actually filled up. So how do we keep track of that? First of all, make sure you set this to equal uh, equal to zero automatically, just to make sure it's equal to zero. Every time we successfully go into our while loop, we're going to want to increment our number of elements up by one. And that's how we'll keep track, because once it exits, it will not be able to you know increase the number of elements anymore. So while j is less than num of elements uh, to print it. So that's what we'll use. We'll use the num of elements. So now let's see out and uh, let's throw out hmm, color number and I'll throw out j plus one so it doesn't start at zero. We want it to say color number one not color number zero. And another empty string and print colors at j so that looks like it should work and should I have an end line I should probably have an end line so uh, I'll click save and I think that should pretty much work so now let's run this see how this will work so I'll throw out I'll just go red orange yellow green. I'll just go four this time. Ugh, negative one. I keep forgetting that one. There we go. And there we go. So it went red all the way through green and it printed all of them. So mm, I wish I could ask you if I need to explain this again. Because I think it, I think it's pretty clear. So uh, we went into our while loop and it checked. So we typed in four right in a row. So you can do that when you're working with loops. You can do that because it keeps hitting this C in. So we put in uh, red. It's going to read red first, see if red is equal to negative 1, which is not, and it's less than the capacity, which it's not. So then it's going to increase our number of elements, which was 0 to begin with, up to 1. Uh, another be beautiful thing about making this a 0 to begin with is if it doesn't work at all, this for loop will not crash, because since j is equal to 0, if a 0 is less than 0, this would never execute to begin with. So let me show you how it won't crash. So if I throw in nothing in, if I just go negative one, nothing happened. But it, it didn't crash. So that's really, really good. Now let's actually put in more than uh, five. So you know what? Let me put in five just to show you the boundaries. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Ah, negative one. I, oh, maybe. Okay, so it went red all the way to blue. So as we can see, by making the capacity five, it worked. Now let's try it with uh, six this time. So I'll go all the way to purple. Uh, red, yellow, then orange, then purple. I'll have purple pop up. And green and... So it's one, two, three, four, five. What am I missing? Blue? So, okay, so blue will be there, then negative one. Now notice how it went red, which is first, then yellow, then orange, then purple, then green, but then blue didn't get typed out. And that's because, well, we are checking two things at once. Whether they typed in negative one, which it wasn't until after blue. So it didn't even get a chance to read this one. Once it hit the capacity, once we finally got to the I was equal to the capacity, uh, then it stopped working. So that's really, really cool. So I'm going to probably stop it.
right here. I think you can see all the code from here. So I'll have you look through this. Uh, maybe pause it so you can look through this to see if it'll make sense. And uh, then I'll see you in the next tutorial. So I'll see you then.